Oh. Salam Tana. Salam Tana. Taina Yistaling. Greetings. And we want to discuss Fasika. Fasika, which is also known as Pesach. Pesach or Passover. And Exodus chapter 12, which we're about to get into. Hopefully you've gotten to listen to a native reader and speaker, I think Allah Azar Gadamu, um, reading Exodus chapter 10 and 11. We're going to go into the study of Exodus chapter 12. Okay, Exodus chapter 12 is the Hebrew Passover or the memorial which is also known as the Lord's Supper or some would say the Last Supper and it's a very important memorial metasebia and that's exactly what it is but let's first of all get into some of the basics and the background of this and let us clear clear this here and let us touch on Exodus chapter 12 but before we get into Exodus chapter 12 what we would like to do is to go over some of the basics and we would hope and pray that the deck of Mesamurit that the disciples and the brothers and sisters who are studying with us will take um, notes of this introduction right here. Okay, RSS. Can you see that right there? RSS, or should I use uh, another, another color? Now the red, the red is for the blood, but we're going to discuss all of that the red is for the blood um r s s number 15. number 15 you should know is bo in hebrew or giba now bo in hebrew means to enter to enter into to enter into it's also interpretive to come but really the word is not so much to come, but it's to enter into in the same sense as as we have uh, Gibba here. So that's the title. We've touched on that briefly already. And if ones want to get a little more insight, one can either, you know, study it on the Internet, go go search it, Google it, look at the Wikipedia site, or obtain a copy of our compilation right here, Shemot, Shemot, the Hebrew book of Exodus. And this helps us and aids us in our studies, the Torah portion, readings, and feeding. And here, this is for this month, well, this, actually, this portion, which is the beginning, and we're in the book of Exodus right here, and Bo is the third the third reading in the book or from the book of Exodus in this book 139 and we go to 139 somewhat incomplete because it's just from a, a Jewish perspective a modern Eurocentric Jewish perspective but now the connection with the Moshiach the Moshiach Yeshua is very important and that now completes the the cipher that completes the half of the story but Many Christians just have New Testament or sound bites from New Testament without the Old Testament foundation. So you have some of the Jews who observe Passover and some of the Christians that observe the Lord's Supper or Easter. And we're going to touch on Easter as well. And that we do not observe Easter. But we do observe Passover, and we do observe the Lord's or Adonai's evening meal, which often is called the Last Supper. So you might know it as the Last Supper. So here we are, 
we are in chapter, about to move into chapter, chapter 12. Chapter 12. And there's a very interesting overview here you find on the Wikipedia. Those who don't have a copy of the book and would like to see some of the basic information here, you can basically go to Wikipedia under the bow right there. But let's continue with... Um, Let's continue with chapter 12 from the Schofield. So we're going to use the Schofield at this point to connect the Christological, you know, saying to connect the Christological aspects of this particular reading and feeding and teaching. So if you have your Bibles, and hopefully if you have a Schofield study Bible, if not, of course, you can download the digital one that we have online, and you can study along. So now here we have the contest with Pharaoh, or Pharaoh. Paren the parenthesis is the Passover. Now, on the next page, if you're studying with the same particular um, edition, which we you know there's a recommended, you know, the first Schofield Study Bible. They have a new one with the New King James uh, version. We don't recommend that, not, not at a beginner level, at a, at a basic level. We recommend this particular one. And the reasons for it, um, we've touched on it previously, and not to regurgitate that at this particular time. We're going to go through this verse by verse in the more full expansion of this. But what we want to do is lay a basic foundation to the importance of Fasika, the importance of the Passover, the Pesach, especially for us as the once lost but now found Beta Israel as well as, as Ethiopian Hebrews. So the first thing we want to do is let's put up the name up here so you can become familiar with this, all right? Now we know Passover, it's often it's called Passover because literally that's exactly what happened, right? Now, Bamarinya and the good is, is Fa, Fa Sika. Fa si ka. In the Hebrew, it's called Pesach. Now, that, that's not Pesach, Pesach. Also, instead of C-H, you have K-H. We have a K sound, right? A K sound in the Royal Amharic. So we have Fa si ka. But the root of it is this idea of Passover. So we should understand and seek to understand exactly what this idea of Passover, what this idea of Passover actually actually um, means and what it really entails. So we're going to begin from the Schofield, from the Schofield uh, right here. We're going to check this out. We're going to take this as a, as a basic foundation on Fasica. All right? So here it says the Passover is a type of Christos. It's a type of Christ. So it's a type of the Moshiach. It's a type of the Messiah, our Redeemer, our Redeemer. Now, for those who might not have a clear um, consciousness of what, or what redeem and Redeemer means, make a note for yourself and please look it up and we'll try to, if that's a question that ones want us to touch on, Redeemer from the Scripture and what's the real role and importance of Redeemer, even the Kingsman, the, the kinsman redeemer, this is who his majesty is, the first um, proclaimer of Rastafari, one of the first proclaimers of Rastafari, Reverend James Morris Webb, he said, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king. In him you will find the redeemer. Now that statement later on was taken up by um, some of the early Rastafari and Garveyites and others and was attributed to Marcus Garvey, but the statement was somewhat changed, where it was the day of redemption is here, or the day of the redemption is near. But the original word from one of the original, we could say, prophets, the African-American reverend James Morris Webb, he said, look to, from his study of the Bible, from his study of Scripture, from his knowledge of of our story as the diaspora over here, as well as that light shining from the east, from Ethiopia to the west, 
the original word was look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king. In him, you will find the kinsman redeemer. Now, we focus on that particular part of the message and the word because it's very important for us to under understand the significance of redeemer. You understand? Not just redemption is one thing. Redemption, redemption cannot come without a person without a redeemer. So we can talk about the day of redemption, but the day of redemption would be mute without a redeemer. So let's understand that. Now many would say, well, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, he is the redeemer. In other words, one would say he is our redeemer. On the psychic, spiritual, soul connection, yes, the Son has come as our, our, our redeemer of our lost souls. However, the redemption of Israel, which was not fulfilled in the first advent, would be fulfilled in the latter advent, see John chapter 16, where Christ speaks of the fatherhood of God. And this is what we have manifested in the person of Kedemawi, Haile Selassie, in real time and in our time. So, the Passover is a type of Christos, Christ meaning Moshiach, the anointed, our Redeemer, Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 28. So this is where we're at. We're in Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12 is where we're studying verses 1 to verse 28, and John chapter 1 verse 29, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 6 to 7, 1 Ethros or Peter chapter 1 verses 18 and, and 19. Now, it's going to lay out a couple of elements here. This is why we love the Schofield Study Bible as a, as a basic level, um, entry level, and a basic level study because it's, it's they're going to break this down for us, and then when we go into the Scripture, when we, when we now study the Scripture, we will begin to see these elements in real time. And then as we understand or comprehend how it was in that time, we can see the fulfillment now in our time and why it's important. It's a, it's a necessity for us to come out, for us to have a repatriation as a people, as a nation, there must, first of all, be a Passover. See, that's what a lot of folks don't recognize. One of them just want to get up and go to Africa or whatever. You could do that. But we're speaking about the people. You know what I'm saying? We're speaking about Kol Israel, Kol Yisrael, Israel Hulu. We're speaking about the lost sheep. Not just individuals can do what individuals want to do, but concerning the people, plus there is a time for that. And what we're seeing is that Passover 2012 is very significant and is very important, and hopefully we will be able to touch on some of those details. But first, the basic teaching, let's just de deal with the basics, the basic instructions, right? One, the land. So the first aspect of Fasica, right? So let's lay it out like this. The first aspect, so, so we understand that Passover is connected with a type of the Moshiach, Christ as our Redeemer. And I gave you the scriptures, and the scriptures is here in the Schofield Study Bible and the notes. The first thing is that the Lamb. So we have the Lamb, right? Now Christ is Yeshua HaMoshiach, the, the Bain Ha Elohim. He is the what? He is the Lamb of God, right? And that fulfillment of it. So the lamb for the fasica, the Passover, must be without blemish. And to test this, it was kept up four days. To test whether the lamb was really without blemish, it was kept up to four days, according to Exodus chapter 12, verses 5 and 6. This very same chapter we're about to get into the more of the detail of so. Adonenu Gitachin, our master, our Lord, if you please, 
his public life under hostile. His public life was under hostile scrutiny. Scrutiny. And was the testing which proved, it was the testing now which proved his consecration or his kedisana, his kedisana. It was such scrutiny. You know what I'm saying? Such scrutiny, hostile scrutiny by the enemies, by friend enemies and others. That testing that proved Christ, our Lord, our Master's, his holiness. So we can overstand this as well with our lives as true Christian or true Meshahawiyan or anointed ones. Our life will be tested. You understand? Our kedisana also will be tested. There will be scrutiny. Have you ever noticed that before, even some of your friends and family, they didn't really care what you did. But as soon as you start talking about Bible and Jah and God, everything you're doing, one's is scrutinizing. Well, oh, if you're holy, then why are you doing that? And, and, and you read the Bible, so why are you doing it? You, you over the scrutiny. And most of us, because we're not studying and showing ourselves approved, easily we, we, we failed at some of the basics because we don't really understand what the way of Yeshua is because we're we're hanging on to sound bites, you understand, instead of grasping the word. And this is also going to connect with the importance of the word, to digest, to live just the word, right? So Luke chapter 11, verse 53 to 54, John chapter um, 8, verse 46, John chapter... Um, 15, 16, 7, 18, John chapter 18, verse 38, also touches on that. Now, the lamb that is thus tested must be slain. So this lamb now, so the second aspect of it, right, the second, let's put it right here, the second aspect of the lamb, so tested, right, must be slain, right, so must be slain. So this lamb First of all, it must be the lamb must be tested. Then the lamb is slain. See, the lamb is tested to prove its holiness, to prove that it's without blemish. Blemish according to what? Blemish according to the law of God concerning the holiness of the lamb. Now, a lot of people say, well, nobody's perfect, so forth and so on. That's not what it's speaking about. It's speaking about God's jaws qualification. You see what I'm saying? His qualifications. It's not speaking about what men and people, you know, men and people give, but they 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 they, they need help. They they can't, you know, they're in the same boat as, as all of us apart from the Moshia are in. So it's not man's qualifications, but it's his qualifications. Just make a make a note of that. Now thirdly, the third well let's give the verses. The Lamb the lamb that is that is tested, right? The lamb that is tested must be slain. Exodus chapter 12, verse 6. John chapter 12, verse 24, which is interesting right there, the connection between Exodus chapter 12, verse 6. I hope, brothers and sisters, I hope you're writing this down. If you're not, go back to the beginning and take down these verses. Um, John chapter 12, verse 24. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Now, the third... The third aspect, so what we have, we have the lamb, right? We have the lamb. The lamb is, quote, tested, right, tried and tested as to its conditioner, its holiness, its consecration, its being without blemish. Then the lamb is slain, right? What's the third aspect? The third aspect is that the blood must be applied. Application, the blood. Now, this scares a lot of folks right here. The blood, right? It must be, I'm going to put this here since it must be APPL is for, for applied or application. Apps. Let's call it the apps. There are apps in the blood. You know, they said there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Yeah, there's power in the blood of Yehoshua, Yeshua. But the blood must be 
applied. You, you know, it's like it's like you have, and and may y'all forgive I for making this. I, I don't think it'd be bad, but just I, I want to want you to understand this. You might have an application on your computer, but if you don't apply it, it doesn't really mean anything. So you might have the blood in the sense, but if the blood is not applied, it doesn't mean anything. Now, in the sense of of the first. Uh, Passover, the blood was applied in a certain way that now teaches us even more. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 7. Now, what does this answer to? First thing you need to understand is what does blood mean? And in fact, when we go a little bit deeper into this, we'll discuss how in John chapter 6, it's very interesting. Well, if you're just curious, look at John chapter 6, verse 66, for those on the 666 trip. Go to John chapter 6, verse 66, and, it's, and then put the whole matter in context. The, the punchline is John chapter 6, verse 66, but then read the whole chapter 6 in its context because there's a connection to the blood and the purpose of the blood here. But you need to, first of all, understand from, from Genesis chapter. Let's just show you right here because, you see, in this application in Christ, Christ the Moshia, Yeshua's sacrifice has done away with animal and blood sacrifices. So let that be noted. That the sacrifice of Yehoshua has done away with the animal and blood sacrifices. For we do not, for our Passover, we do not sacrifice an animal. We don't cut a lamb and slay a lamb and apply literally the blood of the lamb. We don't have to do that. That's, 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 that's already passed, but it's the principle that's important for us to understand. Because without the principle, one would be at a loss, like so many Christians are and churchians are at a loss in what they consider to be, you know, communion. How can you have communion if there's no, the basis of unity is the word, and the knowledge of the word, because Christ said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Why they're not free? Because they don't know the word, and they don't know the truth. So we need to do a little bit better than that. So why is blood important? When we go to Genesis chapter 6, it tells us right here a basic principle. In, G in Genesis chapter excuse me, 9, verse um, 4, it says, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So let's, let's understand that, because there's a lot of folks who are a little, who are a little screwy. You understand? When we say the blood must be applied, you know, they feel that well, this is some bloody ritual or something. No, but you have to understand the significance of the blood. The blood, they, therefore, blood equals what? Genesis chapter 9, verse uh, 6, was it? Verse 4? Genesis 9, verse 4, it tells us that the, blood, that, the, that the blood is the life or the flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof. So the life thereof of, of the flesh is the blood thereof. So blood, my people, blood, right, equals life, right? Blood equals life. Now remember, we're speaking, we're speaking um, spiritually. We're speaking metaphysically. You see, a lot of folks they be talking about spirituality, but then when they see something like the blood must be applied, they think they have to go out the end, throw some blood on them, or something like that. And this is where they get really confusing and spiritually get hurt. You understand? No. When you study and show yourself approved, you recognize that the blood is life, and Let's just get through this for, for a moment if we can't. In fact, no, let's go there right now. Let's, let's really go there right now. Let's, as they say, let's put a fork in that, so to speak. Where, where did that statement really come from? Put a fork in it. I know it's a lot of the brothers and sisters, some of the reason they say, yeah, just, just put a fork in it for a moment. Like, well, what is this, a barbecue or something? All that stuff is done away with. You understand, in and through Christ. But let's go here to um, John chapter 6. Now, John chapter 6 is a mad, interesting chapter. In fact, in this connection with the Fasica, it, it really provides a, 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 a contextual foundation for us if we would begin to understand. Now, there's a great discourse, a great reasoning 
that Yeshua Adonai was having with, with the people, with the Pharisees, the disciples, and it's concerning the bread of life, the bread of life. Now, not to go through verse by verse here, but we're, we're going to touch on the, the, the key connection with the blood matter. If you go to verse, um, um, let me see right here, verse, let's start verse 52. And the Jews, or the religious authorities of the Beta Israel, the Jews, right, the Judahites, we can say, therefore strove among themselves. They had these reasonings among themselves. You know, niggas always arguing among themselves, right? Saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? How can this, because that's what he was talking about in, 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 the verses, in the verses before it. He's talking about the bread and his flesh is bread, so forth and so on. But see, like many of y'all might not, they didn't overstand because many of them, though they were fleshy, the people, spiritually, they were like Gentiles. They were out overstanding. They were like goy. So Christ came to raise their spiritual consciousness in and according to the word of his father and our father, which is also our role and responsibility as, as ministers of the king of kings. Verse 53, it says, then Yeshua, Jesus, said to them, Verily, verily, aman, aman. In other words, truly, truly, I say to you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Now, some of that, I could just see some of the, the Antichrist, atheists, and the rest of them, that, you know, um, Say, y'all are cannibals, because look right there, the, 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 the Messiah, or Jesus, is saying, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have any life in you. But let's, let's read on. Let's not stop at one little sound bite. That's how a lot of y'all get confused. Read the next verse. Read the verse before it. Read the context. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. So he says, whoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath zalalamawi hewet, has life eternal. Mm. And I will raise him up at the last day, and there will be a resurrection on the last day. The one who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood. Now, in what sense is he talking? Let's continue to read on. For my flesh is meat or is, is meal, is food, is edible. He said, my flesh is edible indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Now, to some, this still sounds like a little bit cannibalism. Some say, I know, I can't accept that because you're stupid. Basically, you're stupid. And, the, you know, the beginning of wisdom is to recognize that, that, you, that you lack it, you understand, and then to seek it. But if you act like you know it and say that this is what it's about, you stupid, because that's not what it's about. It says, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. See, this is the real communion, but let's, let's go on, because there's a lot of confusion around this point. As the living father, not the dead father, our father, our Abba is living. His majesty live. Ja live. As the living father have sent me, have sent I, and I live by the father. By Abba. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is, what, this is the root and the groundation and foundation we call Tawahido, or the, the uh, uh, Ritua Hymenot, the, the correct living faith, or the Ethiopically speaking, Orthodox faith. It says, verse 58, it says, this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your, not as your fathers did eat manna, manna, manna. What is it? They didn't know, manna. That's what they said, manna. And are dead. They're mutan. The point is moot. They're moot. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now, in, in the Schofield, if you're reading in the Schofield Study Bible, whether a hard copy or the digital copy that we have for a free download and studying with us here, you'll see that there has a subscription here. It says, Discipleship Tested by Doctrine. 
Discipleship. Discipleship is tested by doctrine. In other words, whether you really are learning and growing is tested by what the teachings are. In other words, discipleship, the Dek Amazamuritinet is tested by the Timharit. Then it has a reference to Matthew chapter 8, verses 19 to 22, and Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. But we're not going to go there right now. We're going to continue with the very next verse because it says, it says that these things said he, said Yeshua, in the synagogue, the Mikorab, as he taught in Kapper, in the Kepper, in the Kepper Neon, or the, or the Kepper of the Nahum the kepra of, of the, the comfort of, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that etymology, but Capernaum for, for, for the rest. Verse 60 says, many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Oh, my God. He's saying to eat his flesh and drink his blood. This, this, this guy, is, this you, you sure must be mad. We're Hebrews. We don't eat, we don't eat flesh and drink blood. Of people, that's cannibalism. But it was so interesting that many people actually believe this, even, and there's a, been a big religious con- controversy in, in a lot of churches, you know, the Catholic thing and the whole thing of Protestants and the Catholics about whether when the, when the priest or the pope says, says blase, blase, whether the bread really turns into the, you know, people say that, that that cracker they give you in Catholic churches, that is really his flesh. You know, and those are the white cracker, too. Think, no, no whole wheat? Anyway, that cracker is really his, and then they give you some grape juice, you know, for the immature Christian, give you some grape juice. They can't give you wine because they don't want you to get drunk, so they give you some grape juice and everything like that. So you're drinking grape juice, and you're eating this this kind of, this funny kind of cracker and everything, and it, and people are taught to believe that this is literally Christ's flesh and blood. And then what they do, they'll, they'll sound by quote a scripture and say, see, it's right there. And most people don't want to read no more because people have like a Bible. <laughs> so think about a, 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 a sickness. It's called Bible phobia. You know, they have Bible phobia. Oh, no, I can't take more than one verse at a time. But that's not I and I. It says, this is a hard saying. This is what they said. This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Yehoshua, when Jesus knew in himself as disciples, those who said that, yes, teacher, teach me. When his disciples murmured at it, he said to them, doth this offend you? Doth this offend you? You know, in other words, does this offend you? Literally, does this make you stumble, Bamarinya. Does this make you stumble? Is this, is this cause for you to stumble? You know, you, you got everything else I was saying. You like what I was abuking the Pharisees, the religious folks, so forth and so on. But now that I say this, the doff, this off and you, is this offensive to you? What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up to where he was before. Question. This is verse 62. Now, here's what's so interesting, and this is where we say there's a, there's a really interesting and a big um, connection to this present time and twilight zone of time. We're not going to get into the Ethiopic Stargate so much because, first of all, we need to get the access code. You see what I'm saying? You always, You know, I mean, first thing first. You know, first thing, we have to master some of this basic level knowledge and information. Here, Christ is saying, what and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up to where he was before. It reminds me of what some of our Ethiopian um, our fam and informants told us concerning Abu Qadus, that Abu Qadus has ascend it. Let not your hearts be troubled, brothers and sisters, that Abba Caduce ascend it. I know it sounds a little bit, people say, oh, this sounds like science fiction, so forth and so on. Nobody can just ascend like that. Really, you, you know everybody. You know everybody that no one can ascend. Well, Christ is saying right here, what and if. He didn't say you will. But it says, what and if you shall see the Son of Man, Lich Teferi, 
Edamari Hila Selassie. Abba produced a sin up where he was before. Now, here's the question. Let's just look at it in this term. He's saying that what if you see him ascend to where he was before? Where, where was that? The heavens. You see the ET, the extraterrestrial connect. It always was there, brothers and sisters. It always was there. Many knew this, but they kept y'all on, you know, one, one, verse, one verse every Sunday. Can you imagine how many verses are in the Bible if you go one verse and then they repeat sometimes the same verses? Wow. It is, he says in verse 63, is the key verse. This is why I wanted to go, I made a little segue about this third point, that the blood must be, must be applied. There's, an, there's a blood app, but the blood app is the life app. You understand? There's a living, in other words, application to this blood. You understand? We have to recognize that there are certain powerful symbols here, but unless they are overstood as symbols, firstly, and in what context of, of, of heart and mind are we to receive to Kabbalah, to Makebel, you understand, to Makebel these, these symbolic types, what, what I like to call these verbal hieroglyphs. Here, verse 63. Simma, Simma, Simul, Simul, listen, Simul. It says, it is, he says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. Now, this is old King James. Basically, quickeneth in old King James means giveth life. It's the spirit that giveth life, quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. But, uh -oh, let, let's, let's listen. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, and they are life. Boom. So you see, he explained it all right there. But look how people are fools. They still want to hold to their first faulty misinterpretation. We're going we're gonna to see this, this significantly here. So what Christ is saying, he gave the power about the bread. He gave the parable about the, the, the Israelites in the wilderness with the manna. He, he spoke about my flesh. You know, my flesh is, 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 is bread indeed, and, and my blood is drink, and he who eats this and drinks this will have eternal life, right? And then some of the disciples, some who said, yes, you're a teacher, but now they were offended. Oh, what kind of thing he's talking about? Now he tried to clarify for them, right? He said, listen. It is a spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit. They are life. The words are what? Spirit. The words are life. If, if, if there's nothing else that you can recognize as metaphysical, this is the crux. This is the core. This is the foundation. This is the groundation. Take some time and, and meditate upon that. Verse 64. But. And Christ goes on. Remember, this is the Red Letter Bible, and he said the Red Letter Bible, that's what Jesus is talking. Yeah, that's what our master, Yeshua, is speaking. So he's continually speaking the next verse, verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. There are some of you that don't amen. Some of you lack amen. Amen, Revelation 3 and, and 14. You will lack the amen. You will lack the admittance. You will lack the ability to admit the truth, and to admit what I'm saying to you as the truth. So you don't have confidence in what I'm saying to you. You don't, you don't trust it. You understand? You don't trust it. Therefore, you cannot act on the knowledge. You can't acknowledge it, and basically you can't apply it. So when y'all are tested, somebody can get brought you understand? But there are some of you that don't, uh, amen, that, that ma'amen, that alemamen. For Yeshua, Jesus knew from the beginning, he knew from the beginning, he knew from the Berasit or Bereshet, he knew from the beginning, from the head, Berashit, you understand, who they were that not, that did not admit, that did not have no Amen, that were not walking in the true and living Amen. He knew. And who should betray him? Who should sell him out? You understand? Who should 
turn Iscariot, in other words, turn him over for a little bubble, you know, a little bubble, diamonds, ruby, ruby, bling, bling, or a carrot, the Iscariot, you know? Verse 65, and he said, and Yeshua said, and our master said, therefore said I to you that no man can come to I except it were given him of my Abba. So I also say this to you, brothers and sisters, when you're trying to share some of this with one, no one can receive it if, if you are presenting and demonstrating it correctly in, 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 in spirit and in truth. No one can receive this teaching of his majesty even if we were to bring forth all the evidence, unless it's given to them of the higher power, of Jah, of the Spirit of God in Christ. They can't, they can't, no one can get to the Father unless, unless it's through Christ. They can say, there's many ways to God. There's many ways to beings that pretend to be God. Let's put that out like that. And those beings are demons. You know what I'm saying? But there's one, in, there's one true way, and that is in the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. You don't like his color? You're more than just a racist if you don't like the fact that he's black and don't want to recognize that. You understand? It is, he is who he is. Boom. Now, what is interesting about this is that that's verse 65. Now, in St. John's chapter 6, verse 66. 666, Chi Stein Stigma, it says, from that time, many of his disciples, many who claimed to be his disciples, they went back and walked no more with him. See, even though he explained that he is speaking verbal hieroglyphics, you understand? Yes, he said, eat my flesh. Yes, he said, drink my blood as a fulfillment of this symbolic Pesach Fasika type, the Passover type, the basic principle that we have here in this Torah portion number 15, known in Hebrew as Boa and as Gibba, Boa Gibba, right? Now, with that being laid as a basic foundation, we're going we're gonna to touch on that a little bit more. That, that was... That was uh, St. John's, or the, or John's Gospel, chapter 6. So check that out, because he's speaking on blood, he's speaking on flesh, you know, eat my flesh, drink my blood, but it's obvious that he's using what they call a metaphor. You know what a metaphor is? When somebody says, it's hot like hell. Have they been to hell to know it's hot? No, but they, but they are j drawing on a metaphor. You, you know, we understand these metaphors all the time. Rappers, DJs, poets, all kind of people use these kind of things. But here you're reading the scripture and you find it so hard to receive the fact they did. Those so-called disciples that went backward and no, uh, no longer walked with Yeshua, See, and, and notice what chapter it is. Of course, some people say the chapters wasn't there, the verses wasn't there, like they were there to know those verses and chapter wasn't there. Be that as it may. But it's in John chapter 6, verse 66. I'm not saying that's the all-important 666 code, but it does tell us something very interesting in context with, with the fullness of what the teaching right there, the discipleship is tested by doctrine. And those that were not in the teaching fell away. This is why we focus on the teaching so much. And, and first of all, learning ourselves what is required. Can we recognize that we can't just do it of, our, of ourselves, that there must be spiritual and higher power working with us, working in us, and working through us to accomplish the goal. Now, this is what Passover teaches so beautifully here. So now as we return to to where we were about the blood must be applied. The blood must be apt. It must be applied. You know what I'm saying? And, and um, Genesis chapter 9, verse 4, where it's showing that, that the blood equals life. So if Christ is speaking symbolically concerning his flesh being bread, right, and his blood being... And, and his blood being drink, 
And he says that if we eat his flesh and drink his blood, you understand, then we have eternal life. We're not talking about the actual, it's like when Christ is at the Passover or, or, or the Lord's Supper table and he's eating with them. He wasn't cutting himself and bleeding himself in, into the cup. It was a symbol. You understand? It, it, it was symbolic. It was, it was a symbolic, it was metaphysical, really. We say symbolic, but basically it was using physical types at a higher level of interpretation, but most folks don't have that interpreter in their heads and hearts like, like um, those disciples who were so off-ended that they walk no more in the teaching of Christ and basically became Iscariots. That's why Christ connects that with those who did not admit, that did not have no amen, you understand, in them, as well as those who would betray him like Askarotawi or Judas Iscariot. Now, as we move forward with this, this, this answers to a pro creation by personal faith. Now that word personal faith, let's just put it up here because you need to you need to understand this word. We touched on it briefly. But this answers to appropriation by personal faith or what we call the the Amen. Right? The A M E N. That's what the Bible says many people be saying Amen, but they don't know they don't know what they're saying. Because we actually what does Amen mean? I mean, really, what is our main? Is our main Christ? Well, the Bible seems to say so in Revelation chapter chapter three, verse um, fourteen. He said, "But I was a pagan god of ancient Egypt." Was he? Anyway, um, let's go on with this. This answers to appropriation by personal faith, and it refutes universalism. John chapter three, verse thirty-six. Let's just go there since it was in John already. 3 and 36. Let's go there with me, brothers and sisters. 3 and 36. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 30, verse 36. 3 and 36. It says, And he that believeth that my men that have our main on the Son hath everlasting or eternal life. He that doesn't have our main on the son, or that, that doesn't our main the son, that doesn't admit the son, that doesn't acknowledge and admit the son as being true, shall not see life. But the wrath of God, the wrath of Ha Elohim Baruch Hu, abideth on him. You see, people wonder why, oh, my life is tough. Yeah, part of it's because you, you still are in Satan's grip, and every call to come out, you, you refuse it, but go deeper and deeper. You trust the devil. You trust the world. You trust the system. They tell you this, even though the, you know, the history basically tells you that they're not to be trusted, but the history of Jah is trustworthy, but you don't want to accept that. You know, so... That's why it says that the one that don't want to admit in Yeshua, that don't want to admit in Jesus, the wrath of Jah, the wrath of God abideth. Abideth means like it's already been dwelling with them. You know what I mean? And, and it ain't going to let up. It's going to stay there. So some people who feel like, like Jah is angry with you, maybe Jah is angry with you. Why don't you check it out? Yeshua is the way. Jesus Christos is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, the fourth part is that the blood thus applied of itself without anything in addition constituted a perfect protection from judgment. This is why the blood was so important. You see, when we look at Pesach, the application on the lintels and the doorposts of the house while the destroyer, the atfiu, the, 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 the destroyer. Now, this destroyer is interesting. Because the destroyer, we're going to go, y'all willing, if this is y'all will, we'll go into a little more detail and show you how there's a connection with this destroyer, what was known in ancient Egypt as destroyer, and that particular, some say it was a comet. Others, like even I and I ourselves, are coming to the conclusion that it was, it was the Nibiru. The Nibiru was the destroyer. And Jeremiah speaks about this destroyer too. And they say this destroyer has a date. 
And some say this date, you understand, is December 21st, 2012, a little before, a little after, around their parts. It's kind of interesting. We'll get into some more of that detail as, as, as well. But what we want to understand here besides all that space speculation is how we can be on solid and firm groundation regardless of where we're at and no matter whatever happens. You understand? So we'll be able to deal with whatever it is. Is that this blood that must be applied, the fourth aspect of it is that the blood that's thus applied of itself without anything in addition. In other words, this blood that's applied, the life of Yeshua, the life of the Lamb, the life of the Lamb of God, the life of Christ. And this is the teaching of His Majesty. This is the teaching of Kedemawi Haile Selassie, which bears witness. He didn't say, oh, I'm this, I'm that. No, he bore witness and he demonstrated his emare, his demonstration enough for those of us who have eyes to see and who receive the truth of the King of Kings in and according to his Christ. So this blood, there's nothing added. There's no, like, blood and this. You understand? It, the blood itself in the Passover, you understand, in the fascica of our people, it constituted a perfect protection from that judgment of the Atfil of Niburu, Planet X, you know, Elanine, some are are making that connection with this at field because, well, we'll get into the at field, the destroyer. Just keep that word, put a note there, the destroyer. Nibiru, question mark, planet X, Eleni, some very interesting connections right there. It would make perfect sense. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, scripture. First John chapter 1, verse 7, another scripture. And Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 and verse 14. Now, fifthly, the fifth point, right, the fifth point, we don't have further room up here, so just listen and take this down or study the, 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 the footnote right here as well. The, the feast, the feast, right, it typified Christos or Moshiach, the Messiah, the Mashiach, the bread of life. Answering to the memorial supper. This is what Passover is. Passover, Fasica, is a memorial supper. And it's very important for our people. And I say that in this present time, 2012, it is very important for us. This is why we're teaching on this. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. To observe the feast is twofold. It's a duty and it's a privilege, brothers and sisters. To observe the metasebia uh, erat, the, the metasebia uh, meal and feast that we know as the fasica, it, it, it is a duty, first of all, for all Beta Israel, all Ethiopian Hebrew, all truly elect Rastafari, and it's a privilege. See, this is where even the idea for Ainaz Rastafari of the, the Aital Sup really comes from. But even many of the elders and the youngins have forgotten that connection of even the Aital Sup with this important Sup, both in the sense of, of Christ in the New Testament and the foundation here, Fasika or the Pesach, the Passover in the Old Testament. So to observe the feast was a duty and a privilege, but not a condition of safety. <laughs> it wasn't a condition of safety. What, what does that mean? As a matter of fact, the feast was not eaten by the Beta Israel on the night in which, nevertheless, they were preserved from the judgment upon the firstborn. You understand? Upon the firstborn. Exodus chapter 12, verse 34 to 39. Now, that being said, that being a basic foundation being said, we want to go a little bit further into this, right? A little bit further into this. So there's a couple of, of main themes to this, right? 
couple of main things. First of all, we're still in the contest with Pharaoh. You understand? With Pharaoh, even in this spiritual Egypt, we're in a contest with the pharaohs in this spiritual Egypt. The war, the war is on. The king of kings already said, until that day, until that day, there's a spiritual warfare. So we touch on the Fasica, the Passover. We touch on the redemption, typical by blood. We, we, we touch on the fact that it's a memorial, metasebia, of redemption by blood. There's the contest with Pharaoh, which continues, and then there's the tenth judgment. What is the tenth judgment? It's the death of the firstborn. Now, this is very significant when, 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 when you think about that, the death of the firstborn especially in societies where that firstborn was a continuance of the lineage, of the power, of the rulership, you understand, of those who were in power. So it's like, you know how people would do everything for their children, so to speak, you know, they'll, 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 all, all, and that, that, that my children want to take over this, so forth and so on, that's their idea. But imagine that's just cut out. Who's going to take it over then? See, this is what really, this is the point where, where historical Egypt was, was, was done, basically. Yes, there were some, some bright days, some, uh, some, some twinkling of, of mostly from the Ethiopian part, you know, coming from, coming from the south. But Egypt, for all intents and purposes, historical Egypt was done after this. So we have the death of the firstborn, then we have the redemption, which is by power, and here also is beginning the first stage, the first stage of the journey. This is what Fasica signifies. Fasica, Pesach, signifies the first stage of the journey. Now, we have this year, this year Passover, Fasica for us. In fact, you can download this from our website right here, the Hebraic um, Hebraic calendar, Hebraic uh, Judaic year calendar. And if you turn to page three, you'll see that the first day of uh, Pesach or Passover day, it's the 14th day of Nisan according to the Hebraic, but the 2012 day is the sunset, is the sunset of April 6th to the nightfall of the 13th. And now the 14th of April marks the seventh day, the seventh day. As we touched on Exodus chapter 12, we're still in Exodus chapter 12, verse 21 to verse 51, as well as Numbers chapter 28, verses 16 to 25. So in the 2012, in the 2012, um, um, temporal time space continuum Passover is sunset of April 6th so brothers and sisters if you if you if you can try to mark that date and 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 the and the seven eight days as being a special memorial a special memorial time and what we're going to do is pause briefly for the cause I want you to just take this down we're going to continue a little bit more with this but we're going to have to make a little more room up here for a couple of significant elements as we go into the Adonai's evening meal it's an, obser it's an observance that honors Jah you see keeping this feast is a duty it's a privilege, but it's also one that honors Jah. It's a very important one that honors Jah. From Old Testament to New Testament to the present time-space continuum that we are presently in. Now, just a point before we get off this. In fact, um, you know, there's Easter. You know, there's Easter. Easter occurs... I think one time in your Bibles, right? Let's see if we can just get this for y'all, you know, because some people say Easter. Easter is, is a totally different, a, a, a totally different, totally different thing. You know, 
for the grace of God, there go I and I too. You know, if it wasn't for the grace of His Majesty and His Christ, we'll probably be rolling Easter eggs and doing a lot of this nonsense that a lot of folks do. So it's not to condemn folks, because a lot of folks are just like what we were before. You know, pray for them. If they are willing, try to, to, to show them that um, Easter is, 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 even though it's in the Bible in one place, you know, and Passover is all over the Bible in many places, that, that um, Easter has to do with Ashtar, Ashtar, and has to do with some of the, 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 the paganistic rites and, and, and rituals of the heathen and the sheathen, and most of these rites and rituals had um, heavily uh, sexualized, you know, there was a lot of, of, of sex rites and rituals, that Easter originally was a sex rite and, 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 and ritual. In fact, if you look at a lot of the stuff that's going on today, even in spiritual Egypt, we can see this kind of connection. But Easter only appears one time. I think it's in the New Testament. It's in Acts of the Apostles. Um, Acts of the Apostles, one particular area. I think we had highlighted it. And it really only appears in the English Bible, which is kind of interesting. Only in the English Bible does it appear. It was a way of them making a compromise, you understand, with, um, with the paganism, with the paganism that was so... Um, prevalent in that particular day and time. Uh, but we, we, we don't observe Easter. Let's just put that out there. We don't observe Easter. We observe Pesach. We observe Fasica. We observe um, Passover, you know, but we don't observe Easter. In fact, Easter has to do with uh, Ishtar, Ashtar, a particular star, but moreover uh, uh, a paganistic and a, a goyim, a festival of the goy of the Gentiles, which we were to false gods. So, um, try to strike that from from your hearts and your minds. But take this down. We're gonna continue with the Fasica 2012. You understand? Know and continue to teach on this. But some of the basic foundation, just to understand the basic um, principles concerning the Lamb how the lamb must be tested, right? The lamb must be tested, and then the lamb that was tested was slain, and that the blood must be applied, and that there's nothing added to that blood. You understand? There's nothing added, subtracted, but that blood itself. And then something's interesting is even though we observe this, especially when we start to look at the New Testament connection where, where Hawadi Apollos, Building on the foundation that Yeshua, that the Moshia manifested, we have Chronicle or uh, Corinthians as well that goes into a little more detail that helps to add and clarify the, the, the idea, the sense, and the context of it. So, brothers and sisters, please stay tuned. More to come. Yah willing, we're going to continue to build on this very, very important subject matter concerning Passover, the memorial feast of the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, and of our people, the ancient Beta Israel, and us, the once lost but now found black sheep of the house of Israel. We Ethiopian Hebrews at home and abroad and the elect, I and I, Ras Teferi. So more to come, brothers and sisters. Stay tuned. Shalom, Ras Teferi.